If we preach Christ, we will preach the church. Where does your blood circulate, inside your body or outside of it? Well, obviously inside your body. In order to get to the blood then, I need to get inside your body to get to your blood. Okay? Where does the blood of Christ circulate? Within his spiritual body or outside of his spiritual body? Obviously within his spiritual body, if I need the blood of Christ, and I do in order to be saved, then I need to get into the body where the blood circulates. The very existence of the Church of Christ, I condemn you of it. I saw you about the moon, the book can see about what you saw on the set. Sasorino, or bar and your sofa. Sasorino, you know, Shadi, a bompire, or bar and impire him. I saw the leadership, no Bible said, and Mamma and Enya, the moon, and yet a ma. Bible says it is so Hello, yeah, ma'am. Akwaba ever digital lectureship, and eh, the fourth day. Akwaba pass a eh, uh, journey in live. A fee and what journey ya? Na a eh, channel TV, any eh, church of Christ TV, you may dear. Ya said this one, cause I eh, day Christ na some panel drew new penny now soon. No, and no, Anna was so good. So, media and Jonathan Mensa was in the Derek Danson. Ah, na unya no, kume. The glorious church as seen by the prophets. The prophets. Send a deep phone a who as a for one moon. The second day, no, you can say the glorious church um, as uh, with regards, with regards to. to God's scheme of redemption. Yes. It was a great lesson. Yes. So, so great. Anna and Rams also, Yakasa, the glorious church and her worship. Exactly. As a for in Munyango Muno. Exactly. Send a quiet bit to me who knew Baco, a sum ah or the man Unyakopo. Yes. And Anna and Rams, you're discussing now, and then. And they are discussing the oneness of the glorious church. As a for Bacono, the Bassam, the Bacque, yes. As a for when we yam the Bacque, and no wassam, and I may yak and wassam. Now, Menya, Minya Baconso, or Belgium, all the way Belgium, or Becansa, Unia said, Sorting in car, Memo Akaba. Major so, and eh, and you may, Minyanum. Pacho, Nago Pandum, Yahoo, Papa, and Nago Passi. Now, Belgium, so to say, Ah, and eh, Nago Pandum, Belgium, Halboko, Asunji, and Yakupon, Ediadum, Yay, El Hadam. Go Passi. Now, um, Enra, okay, ho, Emma, I have your discussion. Um, what's your comment about Enra discussion? Have you know any, um, some few thoughts about Jim about yesterday? Um, Medas of Papa, and then you may a betcher, a tearful for Papa, say Omania Cunyano, now or more ETA, his answer, a who here, say, you know, and a digimano, and in tea a betcher or more, now Yabo Musabaso, say Musu, now or more ETA. Right from the beginning of a year in Jumedia, I go so I edi equino. What to me say, a year at the Sia, Cassim Papa, I bebois, in tea true, Jesus of Christ for ETA. Na ye share ye jumadi e bi enzo. E kaime e bra me teach of Christ en ka na e namso e bo ame e mbo esuno. E atinsa disyoni na no e shemidin 
as I can be about it, maybe a announce so a mammy bow a suit or just a crisis more. And the Enra, so we tell us in here, I think say it was very, very encouraging. Very, very encouraging. So we tell right from the beginning. Okanya or the ABC won a sum I trust ye dema or yango pon na okanya trust ye yeno consistently and ni dia I trust ye dema a ye or sum I ye dema or yango pon no I think say addition every ane na e wum ti many aji papa many so so na anra so ye da some baka phone no e di na asi ABC be biya umudi ya ababi C C C I enso. Okay. Yo um but but said. Um, life discussion, you know, and then life views, you know. So here, yeah, I call him Kakra. I call him Kakra. Now, the other one, and we just say, "Biya, any one of you, a bit me a boy, say, say, any one of you, a bit me a no share." Yes. A bit me a boosty share viewership on our castro. Now, many people be brave, po. And I wanna, only a Christopher, no. A bit me a who, ni a ma ye huwa jo. And I only me ni a jo sa. Me ni o ni a jo pa pa. Na minua dear a tier a watch Jesus of Christ you moon a bra maybe your Christ on and say Jesus of Christ you moon and you are no more and shed out more your homodin a cra say your church Jesus of Christ and you are no more or me a gunner for I a co a sorry no and qua near say O be a share back or crana come by this I won't care in number three can I'm over a hundred thousand views but and you are no more and shed out and share at the even do do kwa no pukwa no enye dey entie eye ye program no enti yesre e no no nyina obi a o church of christ ni a wuti no yesre o wo so e mo pufro na mumie nyina ye nhye christo asempa no den say ya asempa no betimi akwa ni mu e san say dwuma die no enye ye nko an ye di e ye ni e no nyina an ye di na emun hira no so no ye di mie say onyakopon de bedum ye nyina obi a modem mo kakra bi obi a betimi bia no onye it's an say, and you're a new horma. Woman is just a programming. You want a new horma, or would camera no echi. You want a new one so I trust a wash share a dear no echo me fro. It will be our with you median caca and cra, where they would to me eddy. At the end of the day, Nina, Yenina, Yapija, Christo, Nidin, Yenya, Yapija, the glorious church now, Yakan was a mono, Yapija, a dino, a tiestre, and a numina, a mummy in a year home, now yen share a dear no, it's an say, Bebo fro, and so I'm in Quadia, Christo Abudin, Afreno, yen so. Almost so insert my can, so insert my can. Yo, yeah, that's it. Um, that's all. Now, nah, yeah. um, channels be and our platform be and ne. I'm just streaming also. Okay. Live. So, C C A I are all live. Me, me, me monitor channels now. Yeah, yeah. No, now, uko YouTuber, uko YouTube now. Search Chariot TV. On sabi tu miya kaju di di no. Ene bi a ubu oru mo complain. Ni tini YouTube eti eti data do do. Ni chono pe um Facebook. Facebook Benya Chariot TV, Church of Christ TV. Now, the interesting thing is, so what follow Church of Christ TV? You know, I follow Chariot TV. You know, call live na. What when your notification, no? Especially, me now for hours, I put one more link now and send it. I say, me me send you a link, me send you a link. But when you follow page now, now I like page now. Church of Christ TV, Chariot TV. Pe, you know, call live on some account. And I feel so Benya. So program here, yeah, 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 Twitter. Me say boys be brave, new ladies be brave. Epe Twitter. I call Twitter now. Search Chariot TV. Ah, yeah. you only two platforms. Pen on Twitter. Eh, bear the name Chariot TV. Eh, yeah, 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 yeah. And come full full But yeah, 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 it's in capital letters. But open so unya. And also is hashtag digital lectureship. On Sunday to work at Jimmy Dina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Twitter also. So it's to me on Facebook, Chariot TV, and at Church of Christ TV. TV. YouTube, Chariot, Chariot TV, TV. Na, na, Twitter, Twitter so Chariot, Chariot TV. Exactly. I am your number. Maybe our person of Fabia. Number to me, Enya. Yes. Na um, information center. So so, my 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 friend too just said, "Shwe shwe power yeah. center." Me shwe shwe. Me 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 you mu na afi your number catch me say me ba me ka. Uh huh. And the thing is, yes, you move live on so I was shwe shwe. Um, Church of Christ, um, uh, information center. Yes, information center. I will call, call you part of all the way to call you. I will stream live. Oh, and you also see and can. I'm not even here, but I'm not even here. Oh, Nioma, yes, you are one day no. Ah, Brasset, and then I will come and say, oh, comment to be. Then I will bet me a sign of now. Yes, yes, you are my. I'm going to pack it in a bag. Um, Meda Muina, I see. It is true. Your sponsors. Ah, I'm a boy. I'm a Jimmy. You know, it's me. Of course, no. You better or more as far. Many years, eh, and you know, I'm crank, it be a more or more. It's me, I saw you in a senate, and my did you maybe say, everyone? 
um uh, say church of christ i uh, uh, want to uh, uh, belgium no say um, also aso yasne ah uh, uh, you know it's my course and you know church is now um, to me abo uh, ni na no when you open in shroom we actually say i'm part the mission no yeah you know and yeah 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 and i can say and yeah more multi studio and go no more you know be horror ma or more actually hormones so or more edi or more sika a contributor yeah ama and edge media no it's my age media case yeah and I know my own original camera nation, so yeah, the moon I see any new year or yet translation, you know, or yeah, the papa, it is your door, massy papa, any new bar, I want to so or yet sign language, you know, the open show, when you know the kaboom, Emma, yeah, let us for no edimu, I'm at the gross church now, you pissy pigeano, a bed, a bit me edimu, it will be a uncrown cray, you may do be a beer edino, we hope on Emma in Shra, and no yina, copy me say, be say, SBM, and eh. Yeah, you may be at that point, so no. Ah, uh, yeah, the wineness. Ah, uh, a uh, what the girls church in the moon. I think it's very, very interesting. It's an say, you know, you young couple moon. A war, a yeah, or you're up on us or in the moon. You know, you're up on us or in the say, a yeah, but I can't. Now, it's me a day. In me, I say, a yen side, yeah, and you might be to me, I could yeah, at your money. But I'm gonna ask you, I'm gonna show you, come and see if you say, I should be. That's it. Ah, not me, if I could just work kind some few comments, if you are na eti mi abua um i think um eric agabus we we free for chariot and as we are chariot tv okay yeah chariot tv okay we say um eric agabus watching live from germany okay this is of i think germany and we she ana kwakwa dun so so e watch from sunyane i think major so so e watch from london yeah london ana and my my isaac or almost every program i be here Oshé, Oshé, et tu n'as pas pour chercher les pas. Yes. Anna, Brasset, on se so set sebezi. Ah, on se so, on se rehau sotium. Sotium. Sotium, sotium. Ah, sotium. Akra, ma sevi. Hold your gun. Hold your gun. Sotium, on Oshé. Anna, Austin, so je au Maryland. Okay. Anna, Cincinnati, on se ha. Imano, boite. On se rehau from Cincinnati. Anna. Um, you might know Jesse Quansam so Ablukuma, Agape Top, Great okay. Work Brethren, Alex like, James who say, Hey, and a France for you now, the moon. Ah, uh, I'm uh, I think the one, meaning so ultimately the two need ya. Yes, now make I a tear for say, see, yeah, join it, 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 join Ah, uh, wait me anya near my ear, you know. Now wait me. Into but more than you drop a comment, so a comment session once so ever come out. Ma, my main church of Christ TV comments make a cry. I say, um, we have Vida Ankuma. I am watching live. Nyanku Ponsha. Elvis Andrew say I am a member of Church of Christ watching live from Norway. Norway for joining. Um, Joseph Eshen watching from Adua Church of Christ inside Takrade. I hope so I pronounce the correct name. Um, clearly the hand of God is. On our speakers, they should keep it up. Yankupo on shout. Um, Abigail Sam, eh, I say blessings to be blessings be on you. Say, it's a blessing to be here. Okay, okay. I could say from Poma say good evening, very yeah. Ciao, pa. And I Jonas Mensa watching from Minnesota, USA. Watching from Manchester. Basic and I brought a couple set and also I joined this to see Yes, now so oh sha. Just comment to me who may be a who chef. A boy may be the end. Now you who who. Obi who say oh me never be chef. Ha, a shen him cry. Patrick Abin so a chef. We want to a bono region. Inok men sound so a chef. Aguna nya kwai kwai nyaku. I said the nyaku. Well, my I didn't pronounce it well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nyaku so sa. Obed, Obed, Obed Martin, so 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 on so she from who? Wow. Anna, you man or Mauko, and so I she from Kumasi, a Joso. She said, "Be a ne, you are no more she. Be a she. Now, now so be a she. So be a she. I'm a full fry. I'm not even trying to join in. Now you're discussing about. And then discussion. You say you are no more here. No, you're Bruni. I'm not Casa. America Bruni. Anna, you're not going to say she. No, ah, or then some neighbor. Now, and the topic, you know, is the oneness of the church. Yes, the oneness of the glorious church. As a phone, be a quiet. Sasa fono eye biako. Unya Shadrach oponso so aye kradu. Se obe translate every bofu kasemu. Aba chi kasemu. Na yenu dedu dua yenti minti brofu. Na yenti yenti brofu no. Yenti bro ni ni brofu no. Because brofu diye. Yeti. Wuti. Meti brofu. But bro ni ni diye. Nete de biya. 
And a speaker no one can speak no one say. And I never make no. And Michael Clark no so or you be a work at the church say we. Um we is school or Memphis school of preaching. Memphis school of preaching. Memphis school of preaching no no or more direct and back. Yes. Memphis school of preaching no the direct no your friend B J Clark. Teacher said they one in your principal, they two principal, they three principal, or baby, what what, and sorry, sorry, baby, and then the end of principal. Principal, but sometimes the next time to come on, you've been a principal, and they but the oh no, no, or no, I can't say, I'm not going to do my dinner, so I was in Tianan, young children who cry, no, you're best signing off, now make Kai and your normal say, you are a cabna obeying my consul, which for Brooklyn, New York, Robert Hammond, a Columbia, America for Adolson. America, Monsani Miska, Monsani Miska, and you know, Monsani Miska. Yes, I know. Often, I can you know, say live from Memphis School of Preaching, Michael Clark. to be live today from Europe, Africa, Asia, and the U.S. What a wonderful blessing it is to have such a great lectureship on this theme of the church. On day one, we covered the prophecy and the fulfillment of the glorious church. On day two, we covered church in God's scheme of redemption. Yesterday, we covered the worship of the glorious church. And today, we're covering the oneness of the glorious church. It is estimated in America that there are, as of 2020, 380,000 churches. In the last 100 years, in fact, the number of Christians in the world has quadrupled from about 600 million to well past 2 billion presently. Uh, was, 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 uh, sorry, sorry, no, 
I just say, I bought and tap and quite and nine a free six hundred million. I could do a year two billion a year in Nipa or more be a crystal for no. Now, unfortunately, the number that is next going to be said is that there are 41,000 Christian denominations and organizations in the world today. Now, what's the idea of more car? No, just say, what's she? And sorry, sorry, I would do it. What we are seeing now, say, say, yeah, we're more than 41,000. What's happened to our world? How have we gotten to this point? And then the question is, yeah, but through the end, three. Say, sorry, I have a breeze, huh? You think about the oneness of the church, and I want to take your attention to Acts chapter 2. Is one church as good as another? And as we think about the brethren in Acts chapter 2, I want us to notice that the brethren had a series of oneness together. And when you begin with me in Acts chapter 2, in verses 42 through 47, I'm going to read this and then Brother Shadrach will translate it for those that need it. The Bible says, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common. And sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. Praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. In the first place, I want you to notice that these brethren had one commitment. They were committed to the word and to worship. In fact, if you study Acts chapter 2, verse 42, you find all five acts of worship covered in that one verse. You have continued steadfastly, which covers the preaching and teaching. The fellowship, which covered singing and giving, because the Greek word means a joint participation together. And you find in that same Greek word is used to also refer to what we know as the contribution or the giving that we do on every Sunday. And obviously the easiest ones are the ones that say breaking of bread and prayers which cover the Lord's Supper and praying. They were strengthened by the apostles' signs and miracles and the words that they preached to them. But then we find, secondly, that they had one compassion. In verses 44 and 45, they tell us that when a need arose, the brethren provided for that need. 
They were following the commands of Jesus. Because the Bible says in John 13, 34 through 35, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Galatians also has a passage in chapter 6 and verse 10 that says we do good to all men, but especially those of the house of faith. They had one charge, we find in this same passage. They continued this charge daily according to Acts 2.46. This was their way of life, Romans chapter 12, verses 10 through 16. They had one church, and here's where we need to really stop and ask the questions. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 37, the Bible tells me that they were pricked in the heart and they asked, What do we do based on the sermon that had been preached? And Peter tells them exactly what they need to do in verse 38, which says, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, Peter, I can't say I won't say, Mon Sacha Marjane, Namu Mubiara Makwami and Monosu, Namu Benya Hong Kong Kron, Acha de Nibone for free. And on that day, verse 41, 3,000 people were added to the Lord's body. Now, Sad Danwara. And we have that idea of 3,000 members were added, but the Bible doesn't tell us in verse 41 specifically what they were added to. It's not until we look at verse 47 that we realize they were added to the church. Oh, now you could name me could do verse 47 and they will say, Oh, sir, I saw it no and all the wrong account. I have a sincere question that needs to be pondered by all of us, and it's this. Now, me war as a bisabia, me person me busa yen yin nara, me again, not any. If the oneness of the church did not matter, why did they stress? that they were together and had all things common, showing that the first century church was one. With different church names come different beliefs. That's just a natural way of life. With different names and different beliefs, you cannot have unity in differences in doctrine. But those on the day of Pentecost were added to a singular entity, or as we called it, the church, singular in its nature. And this entity, this church, grew daily, verse 47, on a regular basis because they were doing it the way the Lord intended. And so if we could go back in time and ask them, 
What church did you just become a member of? What church do you find yourself? What would their answer have been? And they say, and they yeah, two yeah, boom, come back with you two thousand years ago. Now I could say, eh, I'm sorry, Ben, and I'm okay. I'm sorry, Ben, and I'm your members now. And ka, and omo mrekura no mo aka. I'm sorry, I no mo mo no. You say ne baako. There are really only four ways in this time period in Acts two that you could be religiously speaking. First, you could deny the existence of God entirely. Perhaps you would fall into the pagan category and worship idol gods. Or maybe you held to the Old Testament law that we know from Genesis all the way to Malachi. Or you fell into the New Testament church category. And those on the day of Pentecost were added to something. We know it was the church. That's what verse 47 says. But it's important for us to go to other books in the New Testament to further strengthen this point. Let's grab our Bibles and head over to the book of Ephesians. And we'll begin looking in Ephesians and Galatians, but let's actually begin in Galatians. There is a oneness found not just in the book of Acts, not just in Acts chapter 2, but also in Galatians entirety. Paul told those in Galatia that there has been a departure from the gospel and that there was only one gospel. He says in Galatians 1 verse 6, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel. Verse 7 says, Which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. And he closes out that section of verses 8 and 9 by saying, If anyone preaches a gospel that is different from what we've preached, let him be a curse. This is a serious statement to make that Paul begins his letter to those in Galatia by starting off and saying, if you hold to a gospel that is different from what we teach, you will be a curse. We've already stated that there is only one gospel, and when you study the rest of the book of Galatians, you'll find every reference to the word gospel always being done in a singular nature. Galatians 1 and verse 11, Galatians 2 and verse 2, Galatians 2 and verse 5, Galatians 2 and verse 5, and chapter 2 and verse 7, they all say that there is one gospel, 
We also have Galatians 2.14, Galatians 3.8, and Galatians 4.13 that all talk about there being one gospel. Does it seem to you that Paul wanted to stress the oneness of the gospel? And the church is supposed to preach the gospel, Matthew 28, 18 through 20. But it's not enough to know that there's only one gospel. Paul also goes on to say there's only one way to be righteous in God's eyes. You had a problem in the southern churches of Galatia of them going back to the Old Testament law. Is it any wonder why Paul said in Galatians 2 and verse 20 what he wrote there? I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul says there's supposed to be a oneness in who we serve. And he opens up the very next chapter in chapter 3 by calling these Galatians' departure from the new law foolish. It's no small task or statement to call someone foolish. And so when he writes in Galatians 3 and verse 1, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified? This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish having begun in the Spirit and now you are being made perfect by the flesh? Paul's basically stating here, you cannot be this ignorant of what God wants from you. But he goes even a step further than calling them foolish, and he states that their departure from the new law caused them to fall. After chapter 4 where he talks about the children of Israel in Galatia being more likened to Hagar's child who had no inheritance. In chapter 4, he talks about the he ends up saying in chapter 5 beginning in verse 1 that they had had they had suffered quite a fall. Now, chapter 5 and all can say 
He says in verse 1, Stand fast therefore in the liberty by which Christ has made us free and do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. One of the things that you and I need to think about is what happens in verse 2 and following. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. me, Paul. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. This wasn't Paul saying that circumcision in and of itself was sinful. It was Paul saying, if you make circumcision a religious obligation, you will have to be accountable for all of the Old Testament law. You know as well as I do that Picking and choosing from the old law just doesn't work. But Paul delivers quite a blow to their belief, to their mindset in verse 4. You have become estranged from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by law, you have fallen from grace. Another sincere question that we need to ponder for a moment. If it didn't matter what they did, why did Paul state that they fell? If one church was as good as another or one law was as good as another, Paul would have had nothing to write to Galatia about. Oh, say, eh, eh, I'm sorry, be I, sorry. Now, nah, sorry, but I could also, yes, to say the Fufro no arte. Now, nah, Embra, I was a Pamfufro no mono, and I found that I didn't know in Yako Pomri, Timidiswa, and then we hear Ben and then hear Osma for Paul. We would find ourselves like the Galatians in chapter 3 being foolish to suggest after reading chapter 5 and verse 4 that it didn't matter what law they were following. Brethren, friends, if there were more than one way, Paul would have had no reason and no need to correct them and beg them to get on the correct path. Fathers don't discipline their children when they've done nothing wrong. A man should not fear punishment if he's living in the right way. And it's not hard to see that the whole purpose of Galatians, the book itself, was a plea to seek the old path and do what is God's way versus what they wanted to do. Galatians 
Osman for Paul, a chum more free quine barco, a free de enya, no do more basic quine barco pa, and on the conqua gemono. This is always what Jesus intended. Nasadi Wayne and the Christo, a peser oye. On one occasion in Matthew chapter 12 and verses 46 through 50, Jesus was speaking to a group of people and they said, Well, your mother and your brothers are looking for you. In fact, Jesus answers a very puzzling way by saying, Who is my mother? And who are my brothers? And instead of pointing to his mother and his brothers, he instead he points to his disciples. And he says, here are my mother and my brothers because, verse 50, Whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. And so in Galatia, those churches that were not following the correct law could not call themselves sons of Christ or children of the inheritance because they were not doing the will of the Father. Evidently, the oneness of the church and the gospel and the law matter immensely according to what we have recorded in the book of Galatians. But Paul wrote another letter to another group of Christians that needed some encouragement on the Christian life and how to live and how to behave and how to act. That book is called Ephesians. And we start with this section of looking at the oneness in the book of Ephesians by the statement of all true Christianity is singular. Christianity, by the very nature of the name, is all found in Christ. Christ. And it's interesting to read in Ephesians chapter 1 and really throughout the whole book all the way until chapter 4 how many times the possessive sense of in Christ, in Him, in the gospel, in His Son are found. In chapter 1 alone, you have verses 1, 4, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and verse 20. In chapter 2, it's verses 6 and 7 and verse 13. In chapter 3, it's verses 6 and 11 through 12. 
ena yefa etremi ya nsama nsua enyi mwinsi ya nyi mudu bako enyi edumi ya nunu ninyi na haka asamkrono wa and he finally closes out his section in chapter 4 and verse 32 by saying, In Christ, God forgave you. Is one Savior as good as another? We know the answer from this very section to be no. All of these blessings and salvation itself come from Jesus. We would have no salvation without the blood of Christ, Acts 20 and verse 28. The church, singular, that Jesus purchased with his own blood. And then we find recorded in the same book in Ephesians a series of ones. Now, in Ephesians chapter 4 and verses 4 through 6, we find the following recorded for us. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Now something very interesting occurred in verse number 4 where it says there is one body. In Ephesians chapter 1 in verses 21 through 23 we find out what that body actually is. In verse 22 it says, And he put all things under his feet, and gave him to be head over all things to the church. Which is his body. Stop for a second and read them together. Read them together. Head over all things to the church, which is his body. And there is only one body. And so if there's only one body, what would that have to mean in view of the church? If we're to believe that multiple bodies are acceptable, then we're denying the very inspired words of the Apostle Paul. Remember, friends, that the words that Paul wrote were actually coming from another source. We know this source was Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. And so we want to look at some passages that will prove this. Let's start with John 16, 12 through 14. 
In John 16 and verse 12, Jesus is speaking and he says, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Yes, you know, I can say to you, you know, I say, hey, me want to say, pray, now me de mamu. Now, I'm so going to mean, so I say, say. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. Now, and now I'm he will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. So when Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 23 that the church is his body, and in Ephesians 4 and verse 4 that there's only one body, ultimately, friends, Jesus was writing that. Peter and Paul actually even wrote about the very fact that they were inspired by something other than their own minds. In 2 Peter 1, verses 20 and 21, Peter writes, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation, for prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> And Paul would write in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction, and righteousness. And the whole purpose of all of it, all of inspiration, was for one specific thing, which is that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly <laughs> equipped for every good work. <laughs> And so let me say it again. When Paul or any apostle spoke, wrote, or privately proclaimed the message of God in Bible study, they were involved in spreading what Jesus himself would have been preaching and teaching. And so when Paul uses the exact same word in the Greek for body in both chapter 1 and verse 23 and 22 and chapter 4 and verse 4, what we must conclude is that he meant there is only and can only be one true church of Christ. And it's a good thing that you can now, the Osman for Paul Trun, the Oppressor Trun, and say, You only put your back, you only put your back, you are sorry back, you are, and you're not a young come for me now, you're come on one, the Oppressor Trun, and say, You are sorry back, you are Christo, a sorry no, Church of Christ. And so let's think of some takeaways from the texts that we've studied tonight. In the first century church, first of all, Christians went daily to the temple. Christians went daily to the temple. 
Those from Pentecost that were converted went to the synagogues according to Acts chapter 2 and verse 46 and 45. If it didn't matter for them to be worshiping in the old law, why did Galatia have to get out of that practice? And so we can know that the first century Christians weren't going to the temple to do Old Testament worship, but to try to convert anyone who was there that might listen. But they also sought those in the community because the Bible also says they went house to house. Not everybody's always going to be of the same mind religiously. And what was their goal but to get them to be of the same mind? Which is evident by the daily growth that was experienced by the first century church. Why would anybody need to leave one denomination for another if everyone is okay anyway? And so the church is not non-denominational, nor is it denominational, but it is pre-denominational. The apostles also went into these synagogues and house to house preaching and teaching the gospel. In Acts chapter 4, Peter and John stood before the council and that included the high priest, the highest in the land in that regards of religious leadership, Acts 4 and verse 6. With that opportunity came great expectation though. Despite the power that these men possessed, the disciples of Christ pleaded and implored for them to follow Jesus and His church. And though he arrived later on in the service of the Lord, Paul himself was able to show the correct path to powerful people as well, trying to get them on the path of righteousness, which is only one path. On one occasion, he appealed to Caesar, Acts 25, 9 through 12. He preached to Felix, Festus, and Agrippa, Acts 24, verses 1 through chapter 26 and verse 32. 
if it didn't matter what they believed or what church they belonged to or were added to or whatever word you want to use, why would he preach and try to get them to be added to the Lord's body? He even went to the synagogue regularly trying to find anyone who would listen to the message. Acts 13, 14, Acts 14, 1, Acts 17, 10, and verse 17, Acts 18, 4, 7, and 19, as well as verse 16, and Acts 19 and verse 8, Paul always went to the synagogues to hey, preach. And finally, if other churches were acceptable, those under a different gospel would have had no need to worry. They would have been fine. Yet Peter on the day of Pentecost and the 11 other apostles that were with him all proclaimed a message of stop living this way and do it this way. The message was all about Jesus, and the question has to become, would Jesus have wanted his disciples to preach something that was harmful, or would he have wanted them to preach for division or unity when either or was acceptable? And even Paul would tell those in Galatia, stop living this way. The old law won't save you, it won't help you. Follow the new law, which is far better than what we had before. In conclusion, what a wonderful blessing it is that despite a world of religious confusion, Jesus provided a singular entity, the church, that would last for all eternity. Daniel 2, Joel 2, Isaiah 2, and Acts 2. <laughs> Brethren, friends, remember, there is one body, Ephesians 1, 22 through 23, and 4 and verse 4. It stands alone and sets apart from every other religion that ever has, ever will, or ever could exist. It is supreme. I appreciate the opportunity so much. It's been a delight to be with you today. What a great event that this is, and I pray that it will accomplish many good things for the kingdom.
questions I hold on I can most of them every uh, year um, what's up near there uh, I'm on for I send the abano a B and that yeah 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 to me and no a ball and home and combo it you know Michael it was a normal Michael a year one of the staff are staff or more a year Memphis School of Preaching in the ocean classroom and now uh, a presentation, yeah, yeah, at the every uh, 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 most classroom, right? Yes, the most classroom. Aha, uh -huh. um, uh, yeah, back, yeah, your presentation no, in English said the yeah, uh, more emotion also, a uh, bit me a call and tend them at the moment. So, Michael, you're welcome again. Thank you very much for yes, your sir. presentation. I have some few questions for you, sure, that uh, we'll be able to uh, look at them. Um, the Jews were referred to as the assembly mm -hmm. or the congregation. And when you look at um, um, Mount Sinai, mm -hmm. the Bible says that the congregation got it. And so looking at the words that are used over the three days presentation, including your own, the church, the congregation, and all that, uh, seems to suggest that there are two groups. There are two churches in the, in the Bible. So why do you keep saying one, one body, one church? Well, the word congregation really just means a group of people that have congregated together mm. they are united in being at the same event at the same time if you were to go to a sporting event mm -hmm. you would see a large congregation of people yeah that wouldn't necessarily mean that they were a church though mm -hmm. in this regard though we have one other thing though that makes it even stronger of an argument mm -hmm. it's different laws under the old testament law they were god's chosen people mm -hmm. they were his special people that were in a covenant relationship with him the whole of the Old Testament was trying to get them to the promised land mm. and what were the, were the consequences of them denying God and not living for Him and being taken away into captivity. So sh sure, you could say that there were two churches or two congregations, but one of them was done away. That's what Galatians is all about in the book mm. of Hebrews is mm. we serve a better God with a better covenant. Mm. Romans 7 is a, another good way to answer this, and then I'll let you go on to the next question. Yeah. Romans 7 verses 20 through 25 says the old law was all about perfection. Mm -hmm. And so the congregation in the old law had to be perfect. 
the congregations we find in the New Testament mm -hmm. just have to be faithful. Interesting. Um, again, you, you mentioned Galatians. Mm -hmm. You mentioned, I think, uh, Ephesians. You mentioned other uh, books in the Bible. Sure. And when you pick any of these books, mm -hmm. there's one thing you're going to see right from the beginning or maybe uh, right in the first five verses that there's a church at right. Ephesus. There's a church at uh, Corinth. There's a church at Philippi. So all these things suggest that these churches were so many different churches. So why do you keep saying that there is only one church? While the Bible specifically says that there were many churches and they point to the locations in, in, in all these. Sure. The best argument can be from a secular nature even. You have an iPad, mm -hmm. I have an iPad. Mm -hmm. They're not the same iPad, <laughs> but course. they are made by the same company uh -huh. and therefore promote the same product. Mm -hmm. And I can go to an Apple store mm -hmm. itself, I could go to a Walmart, a Best Buy, any place mm -hmm. that sells this product, mm -hmm. I can buy it. Yeah. The goal, according to what Timothy was told and Titus was told, that they were instructed to establish congregations in every city. Mm -hmm. The goal was, like Acts 8, 4, those that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Mm -hmm. It would be a daunting task to ask for the entire group of Christians today <laughs> to, to meet every first day of the week. <laughs> yeah. And so God understood that and said, let's just put churches into every city. Mm -hmm. But those churches need to hold to the same doctrine that the word commands. Mm. Otherwise, they're just carrying a name, but not the practice. I, I mean, you're, what you're saying brings my mind on um, Acts chapter 8, when the Ethiopian eunuch yes. travel all the way from Ethiopia to um, Jerusalem to worship, meaning uh, if we were to gather at one place, it means that everybody should be flying by now to Jerusalem, right. getting ready for the worship. So right. that's interesting. Um, I have another question concerning the kingdom. Mm -hmm. uh, throughout the presentation, your own and the other ones, we, we get to see that there is a kingdom. And so um, it suggests that that oneness mm -hmm. that you talk about the church, does it mean there's only one kingdom? Yes. In fact, in Matthew 16 and verse 18, mm -hmm. what was my favorite Bible verse growing up was, mm -hmm. Peter, I'm going to give you, uh, upon this rock I'll build my church, mm -hmm. the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Mm -hmm. Verse 19, he says, I'm going to give you the keys, keys to, to the, the kingdom. kingdom, singular. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. In Acts chapter 2, mm. Peter's doing some binding and some loosing, if you will. He's taking those keys and he is binding what the kingdom's law is going to be by preaching that gospel sermon. Mm -hmm. And whatever Peter would loosen or bound would be the same in the kingdom. And so when we read parables, Jesus talked about the parable of an unforgiving servant. Mm -hmm. And the master in that kingdom mm -hmm. was so upset with how this servant had treated his fellow laborer, mm -hmm. that he cast him into prison. Yeah. The master, we understand from that parable, is God. Well, God yeah. And therefore, the kingdom would be the church. And mm -hmm. we're looking at forgiveness as that aspect of that parable. Practicing the church. And if we are not forgiving people, God will do the same thing to us. We'll be cast out oh. Oh. and cast into prison. So yes, the kingdom and the church are one and the same. But, but Michael, you, you know that in the prayer, I mean, when Jesus was teaching his disciples how to pray, there was something he said. Mm -hmm. He said that, that thy will be done mm -hmm. as it is in heaven. That's right. And so if you're saying that the church is a kingdom and is one, then why is it that God's will is not done in the church? People are in the church sinning. People are in the church doing all kinds of things. And so uh, they, if, if God is the king of um the church or the kingdom, then it suggests that his will would have forced everyone to do his will. If, if we were not given free will, that would be correct. In Acts chapter 2, you mm. find 3,000 people mm. chose to become Christians that day. Okay, there's a church. But there were people, evidently, because we weren't told, and all of all the of people them. that heard exactly. became Christians. Mm -hmm. We were told 3,000. So it stands to reason that many people walked away that day not willing to obey God. And even all the way back in Genesis 3, the first mm. congregation of God's people, if you will, yeah. Adam and Eve, had a choice to make 
and they chose incorrectly. Mm. And God could have said, well, I guess I just need to force my will on everybody. Mm -hmm. But what God wants from his creation is for man to love him because he first loved me and then to say, because of all you've done for me, I'm now going to serve you and do what you ask because you've blessed me so immensely. The, the, the question I picked during your presentation um, that you said in Daniel 2, in us 2, in um, Isaiah 2, it talks about oneness, mm -hmm. one, one, one. But I have a question on that. And that is, if we are thinking about God establishing one church, okay, and there is only one, as you say, it is, it is stated in Isaiah 2 that the kingdom will be established in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And that Christ, who is the king of his kingdom, will reign at Jerusalem. Sure. But we all know that the kingdom has not yet come. Oh, you think it has come already? It's come. The kingdom was established. But, but go to the denomination. They yeah, all think absolutely. that the kingdom is now going to come. You know, premillennialism is what we're talking about here. Mm. And that doctrine has reared its, its nature for many, many years now. And what it all bases around mm. is the idea that God is going to establish an earthly throne and, and reign on earth. Okay. But Daniel 2 mm. destroys premillennialism out the water because it says this kingdom that will be established, this mm. fourth kingdom, mm. can never be destroyed. It would be unfortunate for sure, but if every member of the Lord's body on this earth were mm. to just suddenly die today, we would all still have the church in existence because mm. the church was established out of this world. Matthew 16, 19, I'll give you the keys to the kingdom and you're going to bind and loose, and whatever you've loosed or bound, those right. things will be done in heaven. Right. The establishment of the kingdom was done in heaven. And the easiest argument to this is, a lot of the premillennialism view that Jesus is going to reign on a king, uh, have a kingly throne yeah. on earth, comes from the idea that there's still some land left to give to the Israelites. But Joshua tells us in Joshua 21 and verse 43 through 45, God gave all of the land that mm -hmm. he had promised to give. Yeah. So there's nothing left for them to have. And so all they're really holding on to, unfortunately, is an earthly reign that mm -hmm. does not match up with what the scriptures teach. Yeah, because I was thinking that if that is the case, that would have suggested that uh, Isaiah 2 was saying that it's in Jerusalem and therefore Christ would have been seated right. physically. To, 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 okay. Well, and here's an example of this too. Many companies get started in a completely different place than their headquarters. Yeah. Uh, for example, uh, headquarters, a uh, company idea might be had at a restaurant and the headquarters might start in a garage. Mm -hmm. Well, the restaurant's not where the headquarters are, yeah. but that might be where it was established. Yeah. But the garage is where the headquarters are and mm -hmm. that's where the business resides or whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it. Yeah. That's how it happened in Acts chapter 2. In Jerusalem, on mm -hmm. the day of Pentecost, but, the kingdom was established. Okay. I, I got you. Um, so, let's talk about many churches. Mm -hmm. You gave some statistics that we have, like about uh, 41,000 churches mm -hmm. all over the world. That's a lot. <laughs> and then you're saying that out of these 41,000, there's only one church mm -hmm. that belongs to God. My question is, who caused it? Is it yeah. God who wants these people to have different opinions in churches? Is it man or Satan? It's a combination of the last two. Uh, definitely Satan bears a, a majority of the blame because mm -hmm. one of the greatest things the devil has ever done is tell man it's okay to be religious. It's fine mm -hmm. to be spiritually minded. Mm -hmm. Just do it in the way that I think is okay. And there are many people out there right now that mm -hmm. they believe they're doing the right thing. Yeah. Cornelius in Acts chapter 10 would have been found as one that would have said, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Paul, the chapter before that, when he was known as Saul, mm -hmm. he said that what he had done was to help those that were trying to serve the Lord. That's John yeah. 16 too. There will come mm -hmm. a time when a man will come along or whoever thinks that he's killing you is doing that for mm -hmm. my own service. Jesus prophesied about Paul yeah. well before we have him come on the scene. Why are there so many churches? 
Brother Don Blackwell did a video on that. Mm. You can find it on YouTube by just typing in mm. Don Blackwell, why are there so many churches? Mm. And he does a great overview mm -hmm. of about a 35 minute period of why we've gotten to the point that we're at. Mm. But the easiest answer is sin. Man wants to justify his life a lot of times, mm -hmm. and therefore when he finds something the Bible teaches that he won't want to hold to, he'll not teach it anymore. Well, now you have a different denomination mm. that has been sprung even from a, a teaching of God. Yeah. And all, a lot of the, don, the denominations that we see, and of course we know we're pre-denominational, we said that in the yeah. lesson, mm -hmm. a, a lot of these denominations that we do see though, they started because they wanted to justify something mm. that they could not prove in Scripture, but they believe that they can. And so they hold and they cling to the idea that what they're doing is correct. Mm. And most of it stems from acceptance. I don't have to change. God's love and grace cover me. Well, the Galatians were told, no, no, you do have to change. Mm -hmm. You do have to follow this new law, Romans 7, Hebrews. Yeah. All of these books tell us, get right church and let's go home basically mm -hmm. and do what's supposed to be done and not have all of these different denominations let's just have the one church that he established uh, my mind is drawn to the, the point that you just made that Cornelius being I mean directed as to how he can become a Christian one of the speakers I think that last two days or uh, a day before mentioned that if he had already been saved looking at the things that are said about him, he was praying, he was fasting, an angel visited him, mm -hmm. God listened to his prayer, God sent, uh, asked him to send for Peter and all that. If he was saved, then why would God waste time to do all these things? Right. What would the purpose be? Aren't there other people out there that need more salvation than Cornelius would have? Mm -hmm. Evidently. What we see in Acts chapter 10, I wish I could have brought this out in the lesson, but mm. what we see in Acts chapter 10 is a very similar mindset to that synagogue worship idea. Mm -hmm. Go to where there are like-minded people mm -hmm. and they'll be easier to convert <laughs> because they're already up there mentally. Exactly. You just have to get them to the finish line. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's come to this, so many churches. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tie two questions in one and, and, and try and help me. Does God really approve of these many churches? And if he does or he, he doesn't, are you suggesting that there are no Christians in the denominational world? Taking the same thing we just talked about with Cornelius. Mm -hmm. Cornelius was a man who believed in God, mm -hmm. believed in giving alms, and was by all accounts what the average citizen of his time would say was an upright yeah. person righteous in the community. A righteous man, they would probably even say. Mm -hmm. So he lacked something, though. Mm -hmm. And if Cornelius, doing all of the things that he did, could have lacked something, then we need to figure out what that is. Now, here's the other problem with this question, though. Mm. If he becomes a Christian, can he stay doing what he once did? The answer to that would have to be no. And the reason for that is this. If I have to be saved according to what the Bible says, and we both believe as well as we know yeah. that's true, mm -hmm. then I also have to worship, live, behave, and do all of those other things as the Bible says. Mm. And whatever I don't find given authority for in Scripture, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to take care of. Earlier, you translated for me. Yep. There's nothing sinful about that. Mm -hmm. You weren't preaching in my place. Mm -hmm. You were taking what I preached, and, then and you were them. giving other people the opportunity to understand it. Yep. I can't speak the language that you spoke. Mm -hmm. And there are people out there listening that cannot speak English. Yep. There's an expedient need there mm -hmm. for something to be done. You weren't speaking in tongues mm -hmm. and prophesying or anything of that nature. <laughs> no. You were simply a translator. I wish. <laughs> and that's that's what we find. Yeah. The difference is we have to do what the Bible says. And if mm. we're not going to do what the Bible says, then we're not going to be the church that God recorded for us in Scripture. So for emphasis, I'm asking again, are you saying that if anybody leaves outside that one church that you presented today, outside that one kingdom, one body of Christ, that person cannot be a Christian. Is that what you're saying? I'm not saying it. The Bible says it. Mm. And I have to hold to the Bible. And here's, here's the other part with this too. Was Paul doing what he did for the Lord? He, he was. was. Was that enough to justify him? 
No. No. Because what he had to do on the, he found out on the road to Damascus, mm -hmm. you're not what you need to be. Go into the city to yeah. be told what you must do. That's true. After he became a Christian, mm -hmm. did he go back to persecuting Christians and doing what he had been doing before? No, he didn't. No, he changed his life and mm -hmm. he started living like the New Testament Christians were living. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the very first thing you find in Acts chapter 8 and Acts chapter 9, Paul's reputation preceded him yeah. as a sinful man <laughs> exactly. who was a murderous and persecutor. Mm -hmm. And so they would not trust him. Yeah. And if it weren't for Barnabas, among other people, saying, Ooh, hey, yes. <laughs> bring him in, <laughs> yeah. then we would have had a massive issue. They would have issue. run away, yeah. And so Paul had to change, and Paul did change. And they thought, and here's here's interesting thing that I need to say, and I'll let you move on to the next question here, mm -hmm. the next thought. They believed that what he was doing matched what they believed in doing, mm -hmm. biblically speaking. Yeah. But they didn't trust it because what they assumed was happening was, I know what he's doing. Mm -hmm. He's pretending to be this man so that, so that he can get in and then take us all to prison exactly. or kill us. So there was no doubt that what they saw was accurate to their own belief mm -hmm. because no one said, well, he's not even living like he's supposed to live. Yeah. Their only argument was, he's just doing this to put on a show yeah. so he so can get can, us. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, my mind is drawn to this passage in Acts chapter 26, verse 18, um, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which 